Hey guys and welcome to the Killer Bits. My name is Francesca and this week I want to talk about obscure PC games from my childhood. Now for this I want to give you guys five games from my childhood that I still love and cherish to this day, that I remember fondly, but that are a little bit obscure to the point where if you mention them to your friends and what have you, they may not recognise them. Now I'm not 100% sure how obscure they are in terms of the internet, but let's get started. Now the first game is probably the least obscure of the bunch. It's a platforming game. I think it was released in 1994 and you play as a green bunny rabbit or a jackrabbit, I guess. It is Jazz Jackrabbit. And this was a platformer that I sank a lot of time into as a kid. I mean, I wasn't very good at it. In 1994, I was three, so I probably didn't get around to playing it for a couple years. But I remember it fondly because unlike other platformers at the time, stuff like Sonic, for example, and Mario, you had a gun and you were a rabbit with a gun that ran around shooting things. You also moved faster the longer you were moving, so it got quite hectic, and you could pick up different weapons throughout the game that did rapid fire and all sorts of cool things. It doesn't compare in popularity to things like Sonic and Mario, but for me, it was a really good game because when I was very young, I only played video games on a computer. Now, another video game I played a fair bit was actually aimed for children. I'm pretty sure it was a point and click adventure aimed at children because it's very simplistic. Uh, to give you guys a hint, who's that in the sky? Just a ziggin' and a zaggin'. He sure can fly. It's Darby the Dragon. Who's that in the sky? Just a ziggin' and a zaggin'. He sure can fly. It's Darby the Dragon. Now, Darby the Dragon, I actually remember from when I lived in Oman, which means I was less than six at the time. And we got it as a gift from my dad, and we had the family computer that we would play on, me and my older siblings. Now, I obviously didn't really play at that time, I was just watching, but I have also played the game. And the game is a lot of fun because it features silly songs and little mini games. There's a whole point and click puzzle involving trolls and fairies and songs and lots and lots of fun stuff. But the reason I remember this game the most is because we started it, me and my siblings, uh, when we got it, and then we didn't finish the game and it was time for bed. So we went to bed, and we agreed that in the morning we'd try and finish the game. Now when I got up the following morning, it turns out that my brother and my sister had gotten up earlier than me, and decided to finish the game without me, so I distinctly remember that, and if you guys are watching, I remember. I was a kid, you guys are dicks. But Darby the Dragon is a fantastic game from my childhood, and if I ever get a cat, maybe I'll name it Pillsbury. They're shaking in the chandelier. This cider spilling from a vat. Don't ask, I'll tell you who's been here. It's Pillsbury the cat. Pillsbury, oh Pillsbury, oh Pillsbury the cat. So next on my list of obscure 90s video games, I've got something that I'm not sure even is a video game. I'm not really sure what it was. Um, I have no idea how you play it or what the objective was. And that is a game called Creatures. Now, from what I remember, in Creatures you had a, like an egg and you put it in an incubator and out popped some creature thing. Well, it's called Creatures, like an animal. And from that, that was about as much as I could understand. I could make it follow my little hand and there was like items you could pick up like honey and playing balls and carrots and stuff. And there was like a cable car and lifts and stuff. But beyond clicking and making this animal move around, I have absolutely no idea how you play the game and what the objective is. But uh, I had a little creature and he made little weird noises and they were kind of ugly cute, you know, like pugs. And so Creatures is a game that does sit with me from my childhood, which I don't even understand now, and I'm 23, so you know, Creatures. Next up we have a game that was actually on PlayStation, but also on PC, and this is a, another platformer. I guess platformers were maybe easy to make at the time, or easy for me to play as a kid, but the next up we have Pandemonium. Now Pandemonium is a 2.5D platformer, so instead of it just being straight 2D, you have a little bit of depth that you can't walk through. And you play as either a jester or a woman, uh, and you go through these levels, and there's all sorts of cool stuff like uh, watermelons that you bounce on, and you can get abilities that make you free stuff and make you shoot far and kill enemies and stuff, and you can jump on their heads. And it's really fun, it's got fantastic soundtrack, but I remember it because it's bloody difficult. Like, I don't think I ever completed the game. It's bloody fun, it's challenging, and they did really interesting things with the camera. So, for example, there are points where as you go around the edge of a level, the camera turns around with you and you're going like up a spiral, but it's still 2D. And it was a really, really, really neat game. Uh, last but not least, we have a game that a lot of people don't know that came from Electronic Arts. It's a RTS, so real-time strategy, and that is the game Beasts and Bumpkins. Now, Beasts and Bumpkins, you kind of build a village of farmers um, and build up this village and then you have to complete missions. So it's typical real-time strategy, you have a mission that you have to complete. But the reason this game was fun was because of the fantastic personifications that went into the game. So the missions were themselves, they started off easy but got more and more challenging. You had the seasons go by, you have your little villagers. You have male villagers and you have female villagers. 
And it's actually really difficult because if you run out of one of either of the genders, then your population just crashes because you can't make babies anymore. But speaking of making babies, like I say, the characterization in this game was fantastic. Uh, there were points, for example, when the female characters would be like, okay, who are? Like they sound typically far farmerish, or uh, you'd hear them go, way. The best one though had to be like when the when the male farmers would be like, fancy a bit of rough and tumble. And then the woman would be like, all right. And then they'd be like, way. And then you hear a baby crying. That was how you increase your population in the game. Fancy a bit of rough and tumble. Ooh, yes, please. <laughs> way. But it's a RTS that doesn't follow the typical standard at the time in the kind of stuff that you had like uh, Command and Conquer and Age of Empires where it was all about spawning lots of minions and uh, assigning them. In Beasts and Bumpkins you reproduced and created more villagers which you then assigned roles and once you assigned a villager a role they could no longer reproduce and stuff and they could be builders or uh, warriors or what have you and it's really challenging and I feel like not enough people played this game because I swear whenever I say to anyone Beasts and Bumpkins people are like huh? And uh, honestly for those of you who played it you'll know what I mean it was fantastic. So there you have it, five obscure PC games from my childhood that were goddamn fun and you should totally check out if you can find a copy somewhere because I, I I don't think I've seen Beasts and Bumpkins anywhere. Pandemonium, PlayStation Store, Creatures I think is on good old games. Jazz Jack Rabbit I haven't really looked into and Darby the Dragon is very simple and childlike and I probably loved it more for the songs than anything else. So do you guys recognize any of these games or are they too obscure? Let me know in the comments, let me know what games you played as a kid. As always, this has been The Killer Bits and if you found the video interesting you could click that like button. We have a Facebook at facebook.com forward slash The Killer Bits and a Twitter at The Killer Bits. I have been Francesca and this has been incredibly nostalgic and I'm going to go back to reminiscing. See you guys in the next video.